people of the internet, my name is Johnny and welcome to the annual Johnny Blocks Q&A here on the main channel. Also, coincidentally, this aligns pretty well with us hitting 70,000 followers not only here on YouTube but also on Twitter. But I asked y'all over on Twitter and YouTube to celebrate 70k and also, again, it's the annual Q&A. Send in your questions, I'm gonna go through, I got about like 50 of them we're gonna answer in today's video. So without further ado, let's just hop right into it. The first question which I actually got a lot of responses for, was whether or not I'm the Mimic. Now, I, now listen, I know there's a lot of people here in this community who claim to be the Mimic, like Darko and Entom, but they, they, they always forget about little old Johnny Blocks. I mean, have you seen me and the Mimic in the same room together? I don't think so. A lot of people also asked about my thoughts and predictions for the upcoming FNAF Help Wanted 2. I am currently working on a predictions video for what I think minigame is going to be included and how the lore is going to go and how it's going to tie into Ruin. But so far from the gameplay, I think it looks like it's going to be an absolute freaking blast. The graphics look insane. The minigame so far with Funtime Freddy, the Bonkabon, and the Carousel with Moon, they look awesome. It also seems like there's going to be a pretty well-balanced mix of recycled levels and uh, when I say recycled, cycle that's not a bad thing and also completely new levels that Steel has made up like the carousel but I also am really looking forward to how they're going to translate some of the older mini games from like sister location and hopefully pizza sim like the salvage mini games and the office section I don't think they're going to do like a full build your own pizzeria but if they can pull it off that'd be awesome but yeah so far help wanted 2 looks like a goddamn blast I absolutely absolutely cannot wait for it help wanted 1 is my favorite FNAF game of all time so the fact that it's getting a sequel and it looks this good so far with just like the three mini games we've seen and it's coming out very soon hopefully I am beyond excited how do you feel about the economic and political state of the world oh yeah and also you know are you more excited for the movie or help wanted 2 I included this one because that first bit just made me laugh so hard at, like Bro, I'm a FNAF channel. What the hell are you talking about? But to answer the second question, <laughs> I'm more hyped for Help Wanted 2. As amazing as the movie looks so far and as excited as I am for the film to finally be released, I just love Help Wanted 1 so much. Like I said, that doesn't mean I'm not excited at all for the film. I'm so, so, so excited. In fact, a bunch of questions I got as well were what are my thoughts so far in the film? And I'm beyond happy to say it looks like it's going to be another freaking banger from FNAF this year. This is the year of FNAF. Jim Henson's did such a fantastic job on the animatronics. All the actors look like they're doing such a good job. The set design looks incredible. The script looks like it's pretty decent, actually. Uh, I'm really, really excited for Matthew Lillard as William Afton or Steve Raglan. It is going to be an absolute blast. I really, really hope it does well. That leads into our next question. General questions about the film first up. How do we think it's going to do at the box office? Considering the budget was like... 30 million to like 35 million reportedly. I do think it's going to get at least triple that. I can see it making 100 million, which in the age of like all these big blockbuster like Marvel films and Mission Impossible and Barbie, you know, that get like hundreds of millions, sometimes even a billion dollars. 100 million sounds pretty small, but also keep in mind that would be triple the movie's budget. That would be freaking huge for Blumhouse. I just really hope it does well enough for them to put more money and time and effort into the second movie, which I do think it's going to get. What do I think will happen to the animatronics and costumes after the movie? Most likely, I think they're just going to go into storage until they need them again for future projects like movies or maybe if they do a ride. Though I do hope they also get on display at the actual Jim Henson like museum like that'd be awesome so people can walk in and see the costumes if I were to have a role in the movie what would my reaction be and who would I play I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a good enough actor to be like oh yeah I'd be Mike Schmidt I'd be the main character it'd be cool if I was just like eating pizza in the dining room like on one of the commercials I'd take something like that or like a small cameo role like how Daco and all those other youtubers are on the employee of the month board would you rather have a FNAF dark ride or a FNAF pizzeria probably just a dark ride I feel like a pizzeria would be a lot to manage and I don't think they'd put that much time and effort into it do you think Vanessa will become Vanny in the movie trilogy probably not it seems like from what we're getting from the trailers at least it seems like she is aware of William but she's not like a follower of of him plus that just be a whole lot of lore to throw on to someone like oh this person who's helping the main characters you know survive in the first film is now the big bad villain in the third film like that'd be kind of weird do you think the mimic will show up in help wanted 2 probably i feel like it'd be very disappointing if they set him up so much in the books and in ruin and then not do anything with him after you know what would my reaction be going back if they made a freddy fazbear's pizzeria at universal studios excited but also bankrupt because i need to fly 
all the way to Universal Studios and then eat Freddy Fazbear's pizza and fly all the way back. What are my current thoughts on FNAF VHS videos? Maybe this is a hot take nowadays, but I was definitely never into the VHS videos. They all seem pretty samey and repetitive to me. And whenever they try to do something creepy, it just to me at least, was a bit cringy. Oh, Owen left a comment. If you guys don't know, Owen, super dedicated Bloxian, always leaves these super thought-felt comments on like FNAF news videos, almost every single video I post. Though this one, Owen, I can't say is one of your best comments. Where's that video where you were gonna buy a bunch of knockoff FNAF merch people sent you on Twitter? I did actually buy those products that people linked. They were just in a whole bunch of boxes in my bedroom just waiting to be shown off. Originally, I was gonna do a whole big unboxing section on a charity stream in February this year, but... Eh, that just kind of fell through. I do hopefully want to do a charity stream in October leading up to the FNAF movie, so maybe I can add that as a segment. Spiff, for someone with your size and influence in this community, you cannot be asking me what my goddamn League of Legends rank is. I have not played that game in years, and I'm finally free. Don't you dare rope me back into it. Did you ever go to Chuck E. Cheese? Yes, I did quite frequently, actually. I love Chuck E. Cheese. Though the one near me did close down, like, several years ago at this point. Though funny story, when I was there one time, I was super little, I accidentally locked myself in the girls' bathroom stall. That was really traumatizing. If you could be any FNAF character, who and why? Like, Vanessa, or Ballora, Toichika. If a genie gave you three wishes, what would you wish for? To be Vanessa, or Ballora, or Toichika. If you could cosplay one FNAF character, who would it be? Vanessa, or Ballora, or Toy Chica. What do you edit with and what are some tips starting off on YouTube? I use a whole bunch of free programs, which is actually very helpful. OBS to record, that's free. I use GIMP to make all my thumbnails. Even still to this day, I've been using it for years. DaVinci Resolve is another free program. That's the one I use for editing. Also been using that for years, would highly recommend it. How does it feel being a YouTuber and what is the most rewarding part of being a FNAF YouTuber? Quite frankly, just interacting with a whole bunch of amazing people. I've been in the community so long that a lot of people I've looked up to for years years and years I've had the very you know pleasure of actually talking to and getting to know and interacting with the community especially for a fan base that's been around for almost 10 years at this point nine years as of like last month it's still super engaged super exciting to see what FNAF has in store next is there any reason why you don't do a lot of fan game playthroughs on your channel anymore yeah I think personally I just kind of fell out of doing fan games for the longest time that was kind of the main focus of this channel though I also think there's a lot of pressure to playing a fan game you got to play it to completion you got to beat you know, the max mode. And just being honest, I don't have a desire to do that kind of stuff. I just want to play through the first couple of nights, but when the game starts to get so long and it takes so much of your time to record and then I release the video and it does pretty poor, that's just not rewarding for me. It's not really benefiting my channel. Maybe I can do fan game playthroughs on my second channel, but again, they take a lot of time. Kind of similar, I got a lot of people asking if I could play other games on this channel. We do have a history of playing Bendy games and Poppy games and a little bit of other indie horrors like Choo Choo Charles and uh, Doki Doki. I don't think I'm gonna do like news videos or theories or any extra videos on franchises like that But when main new line games come out like when poppy chapter 3 releases uh, later this year We'll be playing that here when a new bendy game comes out We'll be playing it here But quite frankly, that's all I'm willing to do with those franchises because like I said FNAF's kind of the only thing that does well on this channel and if I do other games the YouTube algorithm doesn't really like that a whole lot because FNAF is so big it has so much going on books fan games movie new games merchandise there's just so so much going on with FNAF it makes you know releasing videos regularly on it very very easy but other franchises like Poppy and Bendy even though I still really do enjoy the franchises they just don't get a whole lot of news so it's difficult to make you know regular videos about them but playthroughs absolutely we're gonna be doing them here on the channel what are my thoughts on my older vids and how much do you think I've evolved like I said a lot of my older vids were just playing fan games which I'm not too big a fan of anymore I've considered going back and unlisting or privating some of those old videos not because they're bad but just because they kind of don't really represent what this channel is what I do nowadays though again I understand a lot of people like the history going back and seeing me play uh, night shift at Fred Bears yeah that Ooh, what a classic Johnny Blocks video. I like the content we're doing nowadays. I think it's more engaging. I think it's better suited for the channel and my personality, you know? How does it feel being a new source? How do I stay objective? Where do I get all my information from? Luckily, the FNAF fan base is always on the lookout for new things. So whether it's 
uh, Reddit or, you know, dedicated FNAF fans I follow on Twitter that I have post notifications on for. I have other people that if they see something by themselves, they'll DM me, be like, hey, I just saw this. Look, let's, you know, look into this more. So thankfully, I'm not the only person who's always on the lookout for news. A lot of what I post admittedly does come from other people who are just more aware than I am of what's going on. But I like being a news source. I think it makes me stand out from other people in the community. A lot of people usually don't do news or definitely don't cover news as in-depth or as frequent as I do. Who is the best person that I know? It's whoever subscribes to this channel the fastest. What's my current Fortnite level? 64. Do you have ADHD or OCD because your room is so well put together, but you are hyper most of the time? I've not been diagnosed, and I hope this isn't offensive to say, but I probably do. <laughs> A lot of people who know me IRL can vouch. I talk non freaking stop. I'm always making sure that all of my pot, like, look at this. I just got this new shelf, right? And I made sure that all these pops are, are symmetrical and the posters in the middle. Will you buy the cheese it bag signed by Daka? Will you actually put that on eBay? So a bit of a story. This person was streaming. They were at PAX West and they were streaming in the Fredit Discord server. I joined in. He met up with Daco and John from FNAF and apparently he put up the cheese it bag that they signed on eBay. Could I interest you in a cup of estrogen? Cheers to that. Hmm. That's sweet. Whole bunch of fanverse questions now. What is my favorite Fazbear fanverse game and merchandise so far? With all the recent gameplay reveals, I'm really looking forward to T-Jock, the Ignited Collection, especially because it seems like Nixon's going to be remodeling the characters again to make them look a bit more devilish and creepy and demony. Do I think we'll get any new fanverse games? Probably not. Uh, I really don't think Scott's going to go through the hassle and doing something like that. If anything, we might get new games from creators already in the fanverse like i know uh garrett who works with kane on pop goes evergreen is making a fan game from the looks of it so far that looks like that's gonna be an absolute blast i love the art style of it so i do kind of hope that gets into the fanverse i know kane's mentioned interest in making a sequel to evergreen if it does well as well as expanding their previous works like chase animatronics as well as my pop goes so yeah, I don't think there's going to be any new fanverse entries from people outside of the fanverse. Do you think one day we'll have FNAF Plus? Quite frankly, no. I feel like if we were to have it at some point, we would have heard something from Scott. Though also, the dude never really says anything anyway, so I, 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 you don't know at this point. I do hope we see it one day, but quite frankly, from the looks of it, from the sounds of it so far, I unfortunately do not think we'll ever see FNAF Plus. Do you have any favorite horror multiplayer games? Quite the specific question, I will admit, I'm now into Dead by Daylight, thanks to David Barron and Ambience. Uh, and quite frankly, Project Playtime is pretty goddamn fun. Favorite horror slasher? Gotta go with my boy Ghostface from the Screen Films, though I do see your profile pictures Oppenheimer in the bear trap from Saw. And I will say I'm beyond excited for Saw X. I freaking love those films. I've been re-watching them uh, for the lead up to Saw X and... Dude, it just looks so good. I can't freaking wait. Favorite piece of YouTube's merchandise? Probably the daycare attendant figure. They did such a good job on that. And you also get like two figures for the price of one. It's a steal. Who is my favorite FNAF YouTuber? Admittedly, I don't watch a whole lot of other FNAF YouTubers because I'm always on the lookout for FNAF. So when I want to sit down and watch something and enjoy something, I try and go with something other than FNAF. But I'm always going to shout out Daco. He's an amazing person. He's the go-to guy for FNAF. Serious question. Will you ever do a smasher pass on every FNAF character? This was actually the second most like reply to the YouTube community post, so I guess I gotta do it. Have you read all of the FNAF books? If not, do you own all of them? I do own all of them. I've not read any of the Tales books. I've read the first Fazbear Fright books, but nothing else from that series. I loved the original Charlie trilogy. I've technically read, if you consider it, like the Freddy Files and the graphic novels. But if you're mainly talking about Fazbear Frights and Tales from the Pizzaplex, unfortunately, I have not. Speaking of the books, what direction do I want to see them do after Tales has ended? Like I said, I was a massive fan of the original novel trilogy with Charlie. I would not like for them to continue that story because I think they ended it pretty well with all the characters. But some other trilogy of novels I would absolutely love. If you're having a full conversation with Willie Mafton, what would you say to him? I would probably call the cops because that guy is a mass serial killer. I don't really want to be talking to him. Can you do a playthrough on all of the FNAF games, not including Freddy in Space? I don't know why they specified not Freddy in Space and mash them into one video. I've thought about replaying all the FNAF games. I'm not entirely sure how well they do. I did make one of those videos for Help Wanted revisiting that. That video didn't do too well. It took a long time to record and edit, so... Again, I gotta weigh the options. If the video performs well, maybe I'll replay them, but quite frankly, I don't really have any interest in doing that. Sup, Johnny? Yo. I gotta know, do you have a secret talent that nobody knows about? That's a good question. I actually do. I have this thing where my body can, like, 
store extra estrogen for safekeeping when I need it later on. A lot of people asking about merchandise. I do have a merchandise store, though it has just very basic products on it. I do at some point want to hire an artist to make some actual good looking merchandise. Maybe I'll do something like that towards the lead up to the FNAF movie or Help Wanted 2 or some other big FNAF event. A lot of people asking too if I'd ever do a YouTube's figure or a plushie or a makeshift plushie. I'd like to at some point, maybe a U2's figure. They've not reached out, but if we can come up with a damn good design, I'd love to do something like that. Though plushies, I'm not too keen on because I don't have an OC character, you know? I don't think human plushies look good. So unless, you know, Makeship or U2's or whatever company comes up with a really good Johnny Blocks plushie design, definitely don't expect a Johnny Blocks plushie in the future. I'm just not a fan of human designs. Maybe if I get like an original character and we can turn that into a plushie, I don't know. Ever had a moment in life where you questioned why I liked FNAF and what keeps me in the community? Being real for a second in this Q&A, last month actually, and still a little bit now, I've definitely really questioned why I'm still in the community. FNAF has been going on for nine years. That is half of my entire lifetime. Dedicating half of your life to one topic it definitely got me thinking. I have no desire, I have no plans at all of leaving the FNAF community anytime soon just to ease expectations and worries. Why do I stay in the community? There's just so much going on. New games to look forward to, movies to look forward to, books to look forward to, even if I don't read them. FNAF is just an ever-evolving franchise that I'm always intrigued to see where it goes next, and thankfully for the past year, it's been making these massive, massive steps that I could not be more proud of. I also got a lot of people asking why I'm named Johnny Blocks, and I guess I've never told this story. As you can probably assume it did originate from the game Roblox, though in the way you might not expect. You see, growing up, I was a massive, massive fan of Stampy Cat and Iballistic Squid, and Squid's username on Roblox was actually Squiddy Locks. Though my two-year-old brain was like, he missed the B for, for rope, Squiddy, Squiddy Roblox, he missed the B in Blocks. So when I created my name, Johnny Locks, but I added the B for Roblox, Johnny Blocks, though of course I have done like one Roblox video on this channel. A lot of people asking what type of music I listen to, and I will admit, it's definitely not FNAF songs. I got a lot of people asking, what's your favorite FNAF song, bro? Oh my gosh, what do you think of this FNAF song? In the past, I've said I listen to whatever's on the radio, whatever pop music's going on nowadays, and while that's still true, I will admit I listen to almost exclusively Taylor Swift. You might not be able to tell just from my YouTube videos, but this fella right here, diehard Swifty. I have been more open about it, especially on my old Twitter account, so I've gotten a lot of people asking what's my favorite song or album, and I have toyed around with the idea of ranking the albums and every song on my second channel, so I doubt many people would want to watch that, but if it's, it's something you're interested in, again, there's the second channel for you. Don't be surprised if I do a video like that in the future on there. A lot of people asking if I'm part of the LGBTQ plus community. I am Arrow Ace, if that counts. I don't think I've publicly said that, but there you go, yo, Johnny Blocks Q&A number four exclusive! I think it's because I have the pride flag in the background of all my videos now. I, I originally had that for Pride Month, but I kept it up just because I do support that community, and I don't want people to think I just threw it up because, oh, it's Pride Month, but now when it's over, I gotta take that down. Would you be interested in commissioning a VTuber model or PNG stills, and who is my favorite VTuber? For the first one, I've definitely thought about it, most likely just for streams where I don't really feel like doing much and not turning on my face cam. PNG stills or VTuber would be nice, though I definitely have no plans on turning, you know, like, live action stuff like this with my face cam in traditional videos into PNG stills, that's just not really my type of YouTube video. Uh, and as for my favorite VTuber, it'll be me when I, when I become one. What do you think the next FNAF game will be? Security Breach 2? A sequel to Security Breach would be crazy. I definitely don't think they'd do that. Maybe more DLCs, but a full-blown sequel? Eh, I don't think so. Steel has sparked interest in a 70s, like, Fazbear Entertainment Origins game, I would love to see something like that. Though Scott has also said that the games are going to be focusing more on the future of the franchise rather than going back into the past, so I don't know, we're just gonna have to wait and see. We've been in the Steel Wool era with, you know, Security Breach and Help Wanted for like half of FNAF's lifespan now since 2019. And I do think Help Wanted 2 is going to be like the closing book on, on that chapter of the series, so I'm very intrigued to see where they're going to go after that. And the final question, what inspires you to keep making news videos? News videos specifically, they're just fun. They're easy to make, they do extremely well on the channel, I'll be honest. But also because it's, quite frankly, the type of video that just gets everyone excited. Even if it's something small, like, oh, there's a new YouTube's plushie coming out, or here's a brand new preview of, you know, Hex's upcoming plush or whatever. Like, even small stuff like that, there's a lot of people who are like, oh my god, that plushie looks amazing, and it's so cool to see. You know, it doesn't matter if it has to be something massive like brand new movie trailer or brand new game teaser. Like, even the little things gets people really, really excited, which is awesome to see. I love seeing people still excited about FNAF 
nine years later. Well, that is going to do it for this Johnny Blocks Q&A video. This one might be a bit longer than the other ones, but I think we had a fun time here. And I will, of course, not only see you next year for the fifth Johnny Blocks Q&A when it comes time, but also I'll see you on the flip side. Goodbye. That was really cringe.